is something that we read in our text from Ephesians. If you look in your bulletin, you'll see it. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. The whole book of Ephesians is written about bringing the church together, about the unity of the church. Because at that time there were, oh gosh, there were some arguments in the church about who was right, who was the real Christian, and well, you're circumcised or you're not circumcised and you're going to be a part of it or you're not. But I want to tell you that when we have dividing walls between us, and there are many, are there not? In the church, in politics, and even in our own lives, our own psyche. When we have these dividing walls, and hatred is what puts them up, misunderstanding and tolerance, the results can only be tragic. I want to tell you a story that I think really illustrates the power of breaking through a dividing wall. It's the story, the story is uh, a 2008 film, which some of you may have seen, The Boy in Striped Pajamas. Anybody seen that movie? If you have not, go get it. And get a box of Kleenex, because it is a real keeper. It's the story of a little boy named Bruno. And Bruno is an eight-year-old boy in Nazi Germany, the early part of World War II. And he's a little bit lonely. His father is an upcoming SS commandant. He is in charge of some of the concentration camps that are around Bruno's house. And because of this, he has told Bruno never to go in the yard past the creek. Because he doesn't want Bruno to discover what's on the other side. Well, as little eight-year-old boys are wont to do when their parents tell them not to do something, Bruno decides he's going to investigate, and so he ventures just a little bit farther than he's supposed to. And he crosses the creek, and he, what he finds astonishes him. He finds fence barbed wire fence with guard towers, people with guns. And on the other side of that fence are people who look very different from him. They have shaved heads. They are very, very thin. They all are working very hard. And they all are wearing these funny outfits that look like baggy, dirty, striped pajamas. Bruno is even more surprised when he sees a little boy about his age on the other side of the fence. And so he calls out to him, and the little boy comes over and they begin talking. Bruno is very surprised to find that the little boy's name is Shmuel. He's never heard a name like Shmuel. And he doesn't go by his name. He goes by a number on his arm. And he can't come out to play. He's very tired. He's very hungry. And he looks so careworn. Well, the little boys start up a friendship. And Bruno begins to smuggle things over to Shmuel. Things like food, little pieces of cake, cookies. Every once in a while, a little gift. One day, he brings a soccer ball. But Shmuel says he cannot take it. It would be too dangerous for him to get caught with this and be killed. Again, Bruno, in the child's mind, 
doesn't understand this. One day, Bruno is excited and very happy to see Shmuel in his own kitchen. And Shmuel is cleaning wine glasses for a party. They needed tiny hands, he says. Bruno is so excited to see him, he gives him a big piece of cake. And the boys are enjoying their cake. When suddenly, in comes the SS commandant's sadistic driver, who accuses Shmuel of stealing the cake. He beats him, he sends him back to camp. Bruno is too afraid to defend his friend. And he sits at his kitchen table and cries because he is so ashamed of himself. It is a long time before Shmuel will talk to Bruno again. But Bruno keeps coming to the fence. And gradually Shmuel tells him that he is afraid. His father is missing, and he does not know what to do. Bruno apologizes for not defending him in the kitchen. And he puts his hand through that dividing wall, that, through that barbed wire fence. And the boys clasp hands. They pledge their friendship and their love forever. In that second, love has broken down the dividing wall. Then Bruno gets an idea. I'll come help you find your father. I'll get a shovel, and I'll dig under the fence, and I'll come join you. And Shmuel says, okay. But Bruno says, well, but there's, my father will be so angry with me if he finds me with you. I'm not supposed to be here. So Shmuel says, don't worry about that. I will get you an outfit like mine, and nobody will know. So he does. Bruno burrows under the fence, puts on his own set of striped pajamas, and they are, the, the two boys are just joyous together. Their joy does not last long. Suddenly there is a whistle. And a group of men, including Shmuel and Bruno, are rounded up. They are put into a special room. They hand over their clothes. They hold hands because neither understands what is happening. You can guess what happens. At this point, Bruno's mother un realizes that he is missing. She frantically searches for him everywhere and finally finds the pile of clothes and the shovel at the fence. The SS commandant father runs into the camp shouting no, but it is too late. Hatred always brings death. So what are we to do with this story? My, my object is not to send you home crying. But if you are, that's good that you were listening. My job here today is to challenge each one of you to figure out some way to reach through whatever dividing wall is holding you captive. And I don't know what that might be, whether it is fear, whether it is grief, whether it is uh, intolerance, whether it's jealousy or pride. I don't know. But inside, I bet you all do. And so what I want you to do is to think of that one person or one thing that you can do today to reach through that dividing wall and take someone's hand and be your love and encouragement. Don't we all need that? Want our world be a better place? Even if it just starts with one of us. 
Hatred always brings tragedy. Love brings grace. 